way I do things is it's you know life. It's kind of like a demolition derby, man. Have you ever been to a demolition derby? I mean, I really seriously have you. Uh, I, I've seen them, but I haven't been to one person. Okay, well, I go to them because they're out here for the fair, my, man. You know, county fair. My, my my car looks like it's been in a demolition derby. But, All right, know. yeah. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local, and not so local, music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today my guest is a singer, songwriter, skater, theremin player, just all-around multi-instrumentalist one-man band who's named for his deaf, bare-knuckle, boxing great-grandfather, and now he makes bare-knuckle rock and roll. Please welcome to the channel, Dummy Decker. Hey, Dummy. What's up, Vegas? How you doing, Josh? Not often I, I good, oops, not good, good. I, not often I get the chance to, you know, call legitimately call somebody dummy and not it have is, them be mad. So, you know, that's part <laughs> of the thing is I'm trying to uh, also, you know, kind of take the meaning out of that name. Kind of, you know, that's the whole point of it. It was to take my great grandfather was to make that name not so, you know, to take the whole meaning out of it to make it not so negative connotation. So call me dummy, yeah. Okay. Because I'll knock you um, out. <laughs> I just. Yeah, right. Now, uh, for those of you watching, thank you very much. If you don't know who Dummy Decker is, thank you very much for watching the channel. That means you're watching because you like Room 6. Hey, but also, I think you're going to like him. However, we do not, for this time we don't have a performance, obviously. Uh, he's in Tennessee. I'm in Vegas. But, uh, and, and at the moment, I don't believe we have a music video that we're going to no. go to. <laughs> we're just going to go ahead and enjoy this interview. So, uh, but I will have all his, like, social media where you can catch his music online down in the description. Now then, Mr. Deca, a couple questions. Number one, I wanted to talk um, earliest musical influence with you. Like, what is that earliest musical influence where, that what is that moment where you're like, I want to do that? I can tell you that exactly. All right. Um, it was 19, Most 1977. Can. My dad took me to, we lived in Atlanta. That's where I was born. Um, and he took me to Kiss at the Omni. So 77. Um, right. What destroyer tour? It was after destroyer. So 77. I can't remember if that was double what tour it was. I was a kid. I was six. I was six years old. Um, in 77, you do the math. So, um, I tell you how old I am, but, uh, yeah. So I went to see kiss and, you know, I'm like, Oh my God, I bought into the whole concept as a kid, you know, Gene Simmons flying the demon child, star child, and, all of that. I mean, and I was like, this is a cool, you know, cause my dad and I would play like when the lights go down and, you know, as soon as those, those lights, you hear the breaker click, like click a hair and your arms stand up, you know, it's just like something big is about to happen, you know? And it was just so exciting. And I was like, this is awesome. And, you know, me and my sister would just put on little concerts in the kind of, I guess, white stripe style, uh, in the, on the weekends for the parents kind of thing but um that was my earliest music my dad taking me kiss and he in his albums you know he was into whatever up till he died you know uh he was listening to tool and slipknot and stuff like that so he uh was always listening to something that was progressive at the time he liked you know zeppelin and pink floyd and all that i grew up on basically reading album covers every saturday night Right on. Sounds like he had a rocking kit childhood. Well, I mean, he, he was in the medical field, though. I mean, he's professional. He's a nerd. Uh, he didn't look like a rock and roll. Uh, you never guess it. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, so uh, that was my, to answer your question, long-winded, yeah. Kiss, 77, Atlanta, the Omni. <laughs> That's my musical influence right there. So Nice. I, I have a memory from being, I'm going to say, I got to be four, five, six years old. And um, my brother, my older brother, who's nine years older than me, puts on Kiss. And I don't remember what album, couldn't tell you. But he says, this is Kiss. This is rock and roll. And I'm jumping and bouncing all over the couch as, you know, a little kid will do. And that's my first memory of music. But I couldn't tell you that that was the, that's the moment. I, I want to do that. That, yeah. I think, came from... Um, that I think came from the first time I I, I messed with the guitar. Okay. 
yeah, just the first time I like growing up, I, I took piano lessons, like a lot of kids, and the, so, and as soon as guitar came along, I was like, oh, screw piano, I want guitar, and I wish to this day I'd stuck with it because I, I know like three that. songs on piano, and that's it. Yeah. So, all right, uh, moving on. Now you're in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cool. What's the what's the local music scene like out there? Uh, it's it's actually really really <laughs> happening. Um, you know, there's a lot of bands that have come out of here that are pretty big in different <laughs> genres. You know, I mean, you can go back to Mini Pearl days, Dolly Parton. You can take it back to there. But um, you know, Hank Senior's last show was in Knoxville, and he was traveling when he passed away. Um, he played his last show in Knoxville, was leaving here when he passed away. But uh, right now, I'd say, you know, we've got a reunion coming up with uh, Super Drag. They were a big band uh, out of Knoxville. They had a big MTV hit back in the 90s, you know. Right on. Um, now, going back to Kiss real quick, you have yeah. a Gene Simmons cookie jar? Yes, I do. Uh, Where, what's the story behind that? Uh, well, actually, the story behind that is I saw it on Anthony Bourdain show and, and speaking of Anthony Bourdain got to meet him when I worked at the double down cause they, he filmed uh, the reservations there um, of way back. Yes, I mean, he did. I was still living there, which was pre 2008. It's when I left. So um, yeah, it was way back then. And, and, and he was such a nice guy and very, uh, he was just a cool dude. And that was, he was, I didn't even know who the cat was because we always had people coming in there, man, like, you know, filming this, filming that, you know, or do an interview with whoever <laughs> on the phone. But, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> But the, the cookie right jar, but I saw it on oh. Anthony Bourdain. And then um, I was like, that is so cool because he was in Japan or somewhere and they brought it out. And um, my wife, she can find anything. She found it. And they told me to take it to work. Awesome. HR told me to take it down at work because it was scary. <laughs> the double down. No, 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 no. This is a different job. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a different I was job. Say, the I place guess. with ass juice. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, that's what I'm saying. No, yeah. we would. Uh, yeah, no, ask you. Absolutely not. No. I, I was like, Double Down has HR? <laughs> really? <laughs> no, that makes more sense. Okay. Um. Uh, no. Also, I did not realize you were a former resident of Las Vegas, which explains why you're a fan of Franks and Deans. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, uh, I moved to Vegas in 98. Let's see. I was doing music. I went to college, graduated college, and was doing music. That's how I met my bandmates at the time, the first band I was really in, serious band, um, and um, <clears throat> then graduated college, and we just kept with it, said, let's give it a shot kind of thing, and, uh, uh, you know, hooked up with a manager and all that, and just did, just torn around regionally kind of thing, and then I just, it kind of fizzled out, and moved to Vegas, as my dad was like, move to Vegas, you're bartending, make money, move there. First place I went was Double Down. I was like, man, I'm going to work here. So I worked at the Capri Pizza, ran that place, or New York Cafe. I ran that and made that place kind of a, a spot. And then uh, started working at Double Down. And, you know, yeah, I lived there for quite some time. <laughs> and worked at Double Down for over nice. 10 years. Yeah, I was surprised to see the Franks and Deans. Uh, they're going to be on the show in, here uh, in the hopefully not too near future or not too distant future uh but uh they're they're fun yeah, guys they're and that night. that's why i was like i was like this th this musician in, in tennessee somehow likes franks and deans yeah and i mean it, that's yeah. why i was like and the vermin and dirk well, I, I'm, I, I didn't you know, realize you slip here dirk. yeah i'm friends with dirk and i, I go back uh to yep. uh i know dirk and i'm not like frank and deans weren't even a band i don't think when i was out there they were just starting maybe um but i don't even think they were playing um, when I, I left in 2008. Right on. So now, what are you working on right now? Or is there an EP in the works, or, or uh, you, just doing you know, I've just been kind of a, the way I do things is it's you know life. It's kind of like a demolition derby, man. Have you ever been to a demolition derby? I mean, I really seriously have you. Uh, no, I, I've seen them, but I haven't been to one person. Okay, well, I go to them because they're out here for the fair, my, man. You know, county fair. My, my my car looks like it's been in a demolition derby. But, All right, know. yeah. So when you go to a demolition derby, the first thing you're going to notice is the person that wins the derby drives backwards the whole time. Why? Because they're protecting their engine. 
So if you go through life that way, backwards, let's try it backwards, like a demolition derby, because life is a demolition derby. So I'm going to do it backwards. So I approached, I did music back in the 90s, the way, you know, send out your press packs, you do the showcases, blah, blah, blah. And uh, now with the internet and social media, I'm just like, I'm going to do it totally opposite. I'm just going to throw stuff out there, create stuff uh, and see what sticks and if people like it kind of create a, something that's not even there yet and just kind of throwing stuff out there. And that's kind of... Yeah, you know, you're, you're not the first uh, guest I've had who's doing that where they're just kind of throwing it against the wall, seeing what sticks, uh, doing a single at a time. Like they say, I've got an EP, but I'm only going to release it one song at a time to like whet people's appetite, but also to not just say, go check out my EP. Yeah. They're going to say, here's a song. And, and when it runs its course, here's the next song. And and keep that in in, in uh, the excitement and the anticipation. So it's it's smart. Yeah, um, I mean that's what uh, right. I want to do. I mean, obviously, my goal is um, to do just release like forty fives or just like two song EPs. But I want to do different genres for each EP, and it'd be a different round: round one, round two, round three, round four. Ah, um, I see. So nice. it ties into that, you know. But. Um, cool uh that's how i want to release that stuff kind of because really my musical influence you know kiss is like my first experience but my favorite band that really drives me and influences me that i now still go see this day and still play are the melvins the melvins are the my favorite band you know and their favorite band was kiss as well i saw them open for kiss you know which was cool but yeah um uh, the Melvins and I take from them and their whole DIY uh, putting out the way they put out, they'll put out, they put out 25 clown singles. They were EPs, you know, doing Queen, David Bowie, different stuff. And uh, I was like, that's smart. There's, you know, just release it a single at a time. I mean, it's different now. It's, it's great really. <laughs> and with technology, I use Ableton, I don't use Pro Tools, and I've just always wanted to try the one man, you know, try to do it all. Like when I was a kid, I would say, um, I don't know who was doing it back then like that, but uh, coming up, you know, like Jack White and those people do one man bands and stuff like that, kind of essentially, or Foo Fighters, you know, Dave Grohl put out his first record he played all the instruments, you know. I'd rather be in a band, honestly. He sure did. <laughs> I mean, I, it, it goes that I hate playing with programmed drum beats. Um, so uh, it's a better feeling to play with a band and write and collaborate with somebody. But this is all just new to me that just kind of steamrolled, steamrolled. I mean, just, it just like I said, we're doing it backwards, just – you know, dummy started with Dummy Decker and the name, you know, and just kind of like, I really didn't find out about the name. My dad didn't find out about the history of that name, family really name, that. until kind of late in, I mean, I was like, why didn't you tell me this when I was in a band earlier? That's a great name to use and tie in everything. And uh, he didn't find out until he started digging through stuff close to when he was dying, you know, kind of thing. So... I didn't really find out about who Dummy Decker, he, because once he stopped boxing, he didn't even, he threw away everything. He didn't keep a belt. He didn't keep anything. There was nothing he kept. I don't think he kept a pair of boxing gloves. Um, nothing. He did one interview afterwards and was a dairy farmer for 35 years. Wow. Ago. Yeah. So he was a, you know, his wife was a deaf mute too. Oh, wow. But, you know, yeah. That's why they called him Dummy. See, you know, his name was William Dilworth. My dad yeah, was the yeah, yeah. third, but he would walk to school, the, the deaf and mute school, because he got a, on a dairy farm at six. He got kicked or a uh, horse cart accident and uh, got ran over and damaged his hearing and he couldn't talk. So he didn't learn. He was a deaf mute. <clears throat> and on his way to school, he would get picked on because he's deaf mute going to the deaf school. And so he had to fight. I mean, this is in the ghettos of Baltimore, Maryland. This is where he grew up in the ghetto in Baltimore. And um, so um, he had to fight and bare knuckle back then. But anyway, he had to fight. And one day he was fighting, I don't know, four or five kids. And 
the bare knuckle champs trainer saw him fighting these other kids and won and was like, you're going to be the sparring partner for this, for Jack Britton, who was a champ at the time, bare knuckle champ. And, um, so he's like, you're dummy Decker. That's your name. Cause you're dummy deaf mute, you know, that whole thing. And, um, so, uh, you know, he ended up beating Jack Britton, taking the belt from him going 113 and 12. His last fight was at Madison square garden where he lost to Jack Britton. Uh, and I think it was Jack Britton, but, uh, as Madison Square Garden, it was like, I don't even know the year, 1908 or something crazy like that. Um, it's just wild just learning that stuff. And then he just threw, walked away from it and went to become a dairy, normal dairy farmer and just different. I mean, it was just, didn't even tell the family. It's like, you see these old photos, they would say dummy, 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 dummy. I'm like, who's dummy? You know, like, that's your great grandfather. I'm like, okay. But, uh, and his wife happened to be deaf mute. So um, my grandfather learned sign language and all that. But that's where the name Dummy Decker came from. Um, was uh, He was a bare knuckle boxing champ. And then he quit kind of when they trans went over to gloves, actually. So that's where the name comes from. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, not somebody you want to get punched by, I think. No, he's a, I mean, that picture, that, that, that's still photo. That is a legit photo. That is him, you know, and you, I see the likeness like, ah, oh, he looks mm -hmm. like my dad. He looks like I can see me in him, you know, and, uh, I'm, you know, bigger than him, but, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's pretty wild, but, um, this is something cool to mess with. And like I said, I just started messing around with the Ableton and computer and, here we are talking <laughs> and i got and then, and yeah and it's awesome and it's crazy so. yeah um okay i have a couple more questions for you uh wanted to know number one what's your favorite like have, first of all have you done any shows as dummy decker oh, no that's the whole thing not no, no not no. yet no i'll be uh okay when you i'm not sure you know when this is airing but i know it'll air later but it uh i'll be playing in vegas um in november oh cool definitely let me at know so i'll be playing by. with frank and dean and the hines at double down saloon for the 40 year anniversary i'm playing saturday night november 26 10 p.m slot opening the show frank and dean's is playing that night the highs and i'm there to kick the double down's ass so dummy decker's coming to vegas <laughs> to Maybe hop behind the no, bar. No, no. <laughs> I'll leave that to Mellow now. <laughs> uh, I've been there. Right on, that. man. Well, hey, uh, I will do my best to be there so we can meet in person. That'll be awesome. Yeah, those not those that that the anniversary weekend is always a crazy weekend, and the Saturday night is the big night. So, what you know what you know what I'll do is I'll schedule this interview to um, basically you edit this part, yeah. drop. Well, no, I, no. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could, you know uh, yeah, yeah. They like know how you I could do. drop like, uh, let's see, what is it? Sep the week before. Yeah, November, October, whatever. Well, because that way, yeah. So here you go, listeners. Here you go. Little scoop. When you watch this, it'll be it'll be the Saturday. It'll be one week before he's at the Double Down. Thanksgiving weekend. Tw November 26th. So, so future Josh, November 21st, you're going to post this. There yeah. you go. And if I'm if I'm wrong... If I'm wrong, hold me accountable in the comments, please. Yes. And, All right. Uh, I'll um, be playing with a, so, I'll be so, playing with a band that's yet to be uh, determined, or if not, I'll be doing it by myself. Either way, I'm coming there <laughs> to kick the Double Down's ass, and it should be a great night, and it's free. Awesome. Well, hey, we've got one more question here, and uh, you made it. Yay. So yeah. I wanted to ask – if you could change one thing about the Knoxville, Tennessee local music scene, what would it be? Um, if there was a really like a more of a local, like a local label or something like that, there's not a, really a local independent label. That's kind of where, you know, I was really with Dummy Decker. I was just kind of starting it. Not I was wanting to learn the recording process to record demos for local bands, really just to kind of, do that you know um you know because i know how it is kind of thing and do it for them yep. for cheap money and you know be like hey 
this is I don't know of a lot, but you're this is what you get, you know, kind of thing. So there you go. If you if you happen to be watching this and are anywhere near Knoxville, Tennessee, and you have a record label, start hitting up musicians because apparently they need one. Yeah, that's right. On. I mean, there's no um, club. We so right on. I apologize for the briefness of this interview, but I'm on Zoom and it's the free something. version, and they're telling me. Uh, well, the free version you get you get a certain amount of time, so uh, they're telling me, "Hey, times uh, gotcha. times will stop." But in the meantime, in the meantime, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for watching, and definitely check him out by using the social media links down in the description. If you want to be on the channel, please consider hitting me up using my email address or the Room Six social media link also down in the description. That's also where you can get merch like "Make Music Not Excuses" on Room Six Shop. You can also become a patron on Patreon, where you get patron only content for buck a month or, or more and uh, i have a couple cds of my own out all ways you can support the channel speaking of which at uh by the time this comes out this will be a, a in the past but I'm something sorry. i'm doing this saturday at time of recording is the room six rocks summer showcase where five acts that have been on the channel will be actually given a a, a stage to play you know full volume and they're going to be playing to a bunch of different types of audiences than they normally would it's a it's a very very mix that's been on room six so i'm excited about that uh, if you want to see the live stream about that please you know look through the channel and uh you'll see the live stream it's room six rocks summer showcase at chiba hut in in the meantime thank you for being on the channel thank if you, you want to see more videos like this please click up there and if you want to subscribe it would really make a difference please click you know down there and don't forget to ring the bell remember to be amazing and we'll see you next time on room six Say goodbye, dummy. Bye. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> so someone always does something to them. Uh.